Hey everybody, welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And Carly Bird. And we've made it to week three, episode three. Three weeks in a row. So far we're batting a thousand. We're three for three on getting these episodes out. Yeah, I'm feeling really good about it. We are uh, changing the format up a little bit and we're going to try to get right into the story. But first, what are we drinking tonight, Carly? Tonight, okay, tonight's a little bit complicated because I've decided to incorporate my kombucha. I am a very fervent kombucha brewer and I enjoy making all different kinds and flavors of kombucha. So basically, it's a month long in the process, but I decided to go ahead and incorporate my lavender mint kombucha this time with our, um, what is it, Jose Cuervo Silver Tequila? I think we uh, went with Jose Cuervo Silver Tequila this time. Yeah, so basically it's uh, three-fourths of my lavender mint kombucha, which I can in- include the exact recipe um, down below, but also with one-fourth of uh, some silver Jose Cuervo Tequila, and it is very good. It tastes fantastic. Now, I know we usually try to do some kind of drink recipe that everybody can get, but uh, we'll have a link in the description to what we used um, and also maybe where you can get this yourself. But it is fresh. It's just, it's delicious. Are you ready for tonight? I am. I heard you screaming earlier today. Um, (laughs) it, It was really funny. I was upstairs with the dog in the living room and I literally heard Thomas like scream and I ran downstairs and I was like hey are you okay and he's like uh yeah I'm fine I was just reading the story for later tonight for our podcast and um I couldn't handle it so basically I feel like I'm in for it I was uh, at, at a very important part of the story and as soon as that happened um my phone and my computer <laughs> decided to make this audible ding noise because I received an email and text message and when that happened I then promptly uh shit myself um <laughs> Because I got into it, guys. All right. I'm super excited. So, All right. What is the name of our story? Tonight's story is called The Beast. The Beast? Like Beauty and the Beast Beast? Well, there's a beauty and there's definitely a beast in it. Ooh. We're going Disney Plus tonight, folks. When you have little kids, they tell tall tales. Fear. Love excitement, all these things are attributed to children. But what happens when it can't be necessarily placed in just a child's imagination? And what happens, what happens in the dreams becomes reality. Time now for the tale of the beast. Robin was your average tomboy. She enjoyed playing with her action figures, getting dirty in the mud, and playing physical sports. She was small with long blonde hair and always wore pop culture t-shirts. She loved movies but didn't understand most of them and being only eight years old you can see why. She was always into whatever her dad was into. Classical cult movies, cars, trucks. She had plenty of friends also who all went to the same elementary school as her and she lived the average fairy tale life of a kid at that time. She just kind of sounds like me. Yeah. She's, I she, was very tomboy. Very, very much like uh, a nature of the time, just a good old American kid. One evening, after changing into her turtle pajamas and climbing into bed, she had to gather up all of her cartoon stuffies. turtle one was her favorite. It was a Thursday, so it was Turtle Thursday. Making sure her stuffed animals were in order, she scooted down into the covers. The sun was finally setting outside her window, which she she could clearly see through the window that overlooked the alleyway. Her dad came in to tuck Robin in. As promised, he completed his usual routine of saying goodnight to each 
and every animal in the room by name, and then finally tucking Robin in with a kiss on the forehead. Good night, pumpkin, he said as he stared at her lovingly. Daddy, she asked sleepily. What is a sugar plum? Daddy, can you close the closet door, please? I forgot to do it. Her dad looked over at a partially open closet door. They were folding closet doors. Double doors, basically. He walked over to one of the, uh, one of the doors that was just slightly ajar and pushed it close. Good. Anything else you would like, princess? Waiting to see if there was anything else before leaving. Nope. Ready for bed, Captain. He smiled and slowly closed the door behind him, leaving it open a crack. Robin was brave, but she still needed the door open a crack. She didn't like it all the way open, because they were just too much for a girl of her age. You could see all the way down the hall. It was something she didn't want to wake up in the middle of the night to see with all that light coming in. She's a big girl and she can handle the dark. Plus the hallway light always flickered on and off and she heard her father making his way downstairs since he always stayed up late watching adult television. I don't know what the fuck that means, but that's how the story was written. That's a really <laughs> strict <laughs> adult television. Yeah. What does she hear down the I, hall? I have no idea, but that's how it was written. And I was thinking, like, should I edit that part out? I'm sorry to take everyone out of it, but it was just, I just, I, I, that was the one part that started making me laugh. It's like thinking of like an eight-year-old girl. Like, yeah, he's watching adult, adult stuff. Adult television. So it's like, what does the kid think it's adult? And then my mind being a sick little bastard, like, it's like, does what? that mean it's Wheels of Fortune? Or does that mean yeah, like yeah. we hear some things that are not? Oh my gosh, <laughs> that always got me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Back to it. She closed her eyes and drifted off to sleep. Robin was then awoken in the middle of the night by a noise she had never heard before. And a smell. It sounded like, like growling or, or something of that nature. Kind of like a, a big T-Rex dinosaur breathing. In that movie before with the roar that then they chased the car? No, that couldn't be it. The moonlight filled the room and she could see well in the dark. There was nothing in the room and she assumed it may have been her little dog Chipper. He was a little Yorkie, but was fat <laughs> and had breathing problems. <laughs> Maybe... That was him, because he makes funny noises all the time. <laughs> she scanned the room and listened for her dog's weird clinkle-clackle and heavy breathing. But there was nothing. Slowly, she sat up from the bed to get a better look. The closet door was slightly opened. She knows it, it was closed earlier. She saw it get closed by her dad. And he's really strong. Robin considered not getting out of bed, but it was going to bother her if she didn't fix it. Maybe she could go to the bathroom and make it worth the trip out of her warm, comfy bed. She slowly climbed out of bed, placing both feet on the floor, carefully navigating the floor in the dark. She reached for the closet door. Once her hand touched the knob, the smell grew loud, more potent, and the gnarling sound sulfur. stopped. In fact, all sounds stopped entirely and was replaced by a sharp ringing in her head. Her eyes started to bother her. They began to see, she began to see stars, only faintly at first, but they started to intensify. She pulled the knob to try to close it. And when she tried, the door flew open. <gasps> there in the depths of the closet, something was lurking. She didn't quite know, nor could she really see what it was. What she could see were two brightly growing red eyes looking at her from the shadows. She gasped 
and began to step backwards from the closet. <coughs> Her vision was still obscured. She couldn't see what it was, but it looked mean. The shadow of those that this thing was massive. Robin tried to scream, but her voice was stifled. She couldn't scream. The creature then leaped at Robin. <gasps> As it connected with her body, claws digged into her shoulder. She woke up. Her heart was racing. She was screaming, but doesn't remember doing anything. It was her nightmare. A nightmare. But she continued to scream. Loud thuds came from beyond her bedroom door and the door burst open. The lights flicked on. What, 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 what's wrong? Her father said, sitting down on the bed to wrap his arms around her. Daddy, daddy, I had the worstest dream ever, she said, still trembling, making out words through her sobbing tears. Well, it's over now, honey. Do you want to tell me about it? Her father sat back a bit to listen. She couldn't get the words out. She needed to cry good and hard before anything worthwhile was coming out. Holy smokes, what happened to your PJs? Have they always been, have they always had all these holes and cuts in them? <gasps> he asked, grabbing the PJ top at the shoulder and looking closely, pulling at the fabric. Robin looked down at her shirt. Sure enough, were a few tiny rips across each shoulder, just in the front. It was real. They were exactly where the monster got her in her dreams. She cried harder because these were her favorite PJs and she wanted to be brave for her dad. How are you doing, champ? Father asked, trying to console her. Better, daddy. After calming down enough and clearing the tears from her face, Robin was ready to speak. Daddy, it was scary. There was a monster in the closet and I couldn't hear anymore. I couldn't see anymore. And, and, and she started to choke up again. It's okay. Monsters aren't real. They just make them in the movies. And they're fake, completely fake, just like the dinosaur that chased the car in that one movie we watched. Robin nodded her head gently. The dad said, no more scary movies for you before bed, young lady. Now let's get you cleaned up in the bathroom and back to bed. It's past midnight. Her daddy held Robin to get up, and he planned to carry her in his arms to the bathroom. She climbed into his arms, and he turned and started for the door. Out of the corner of his eye, he noticed something. Hmm. That stupid closet door must be busted. I'll take a look at it tomorrow. And the two went off to the bedroom, the bathroom. Robin rinsed her face with water and calmed down. The two walked back to the bedroom, and her dad went over to the closet to take a closer look. He played with the door a few times to check it, and it seemed to be decent in all working order. Robin was still on edge as she climbed back into the bed. She adjusted her stuffed animals that were against the wall and nestled back under the covers. Daddy, can you leave the hallway light on, please? Her father looked at her and smiled. Sure, if you feel better with it on. I'll leave it on for you. Good night, princess. I love you. He flipped off the bedroom lights and left the room. He closed the door, leaving it open only slightly to leave the light to creep into the room. Robin still had tears running down her cheeks. It was the most terrifying dream she had ever had. And she thought it was more than real. Her pajamas were torn. The closet door was open. It had to have happened. The only thing she didn't understand was that she was standing by the window in front of the closet and she woke up in bed. Either way, it was still very scary. The eyes... I, maybe I dreamed him, but how did I dream that smell? That sulfur smell. She tried to close her eyes to get to sleep and prepare to go to school tomorrow. The next morning, all the rain had stopped. 
The ground was wet with puddles, and the sun had not shone quite yet to clear it up. Robin ate breakfast with her dad, who made pancakes and bacon. Did you sleep any better, sweetie? he asked as she rounded the corner towards the dining room. I don't know, she replied coyly. Well, no more bad dreams, okay? My be her belly was full. She smiled at the jokes that her dad tried to relay to her to make her feel better. I'm going to be late for the bus. The bus would be at her corner any minute, and she didn't want to be late. After finishing her plate, she took, she took it to the sink and gave her dad a hug. He grabbed her backpack and passed it to her. She put on her jacket, and they started for the, do the door. You'll be fine. You have your friends and me. You're super brave, and no big bad nightmares can hurt you, because all, because I'll hurt them first, understand? He made a karate pose and started chopping at the air. Robin giggled at how silly her dad was, and it honestly made her feel much better. At school, Robin sat through Mrs. Nelson's class. She was such a, f a fun teacher and always had a way with the kids. Today, they were learning about planets and the solar system. She was excited to learn this subject, as she loved all things science and science fiction. Today, they were learning about Mars and its two moons. Two moons were an exciting concept for Robin, since she could only see one. The class colored a picture of Mars and wrote down a few facts they learned about Mars underneath the image. They proudly went to the hallway to hang them on display for the school to see. Everyone returned to the class and sat down. Mrs. Nelson asked the class, Now, did anyone draw aliens or, or any Martians or monsters? The class laughed a bit. School ended around 2.45, which was early since they usually got out at 3, and everyone grabbed their bags and headed for the door. Robin stayed behind. She wanted to ask Mrs. Nelson a question to, to, to see what she thought. She lined. She waited at the door for Robin. We are going to walk to the playground for dismissal. I wanted to ask you something. Shyly, she asked her teacher, Okay, let's go downstairs to the lineup and we can talk there. Robin nodded and got in her place in line. The class walked down the playground where parents picked up their children for load up and drop off. Basically, I think it's just regular school shit. Oh, Mrs. Nelson shut, said with a shriek. I almost forgot, dearie. What is it you wanted to say? Mrs. Nelson knelt down to speak with Robin. Uh, um, uh, Robin couldn't generate the words. I wanted to ask you if you ever had, um, have you ever had a bad dream? Mrs. Nelson's facial expression changed to seriousness for a moment, but then returned to a smile. Well, Robin, everyone has bad dreams. They happen. It is your brain playing a movie for you to watch while you are asleep. Sometimes it plays a happy, funny movie. Sometimes it plays a sad movie. But there are those times we all do not like, that it plays a scary movie. That is what a nightmare is, sweetie. A scary movie. Robin stood there for a moment trying to process this whole concept. What if... She murmured, water forming in her eyes. What if the movie hurts you in real life? Mrs. Nelson raised an eyebrow. What do you mean if it hurts you in real life? Are you okay? Did someone hurt you? Mrs. Nelson stood to her feet and began looking around the playground. A concerned look on her face was apparent. I'm okay, but I had a bad dream, and I woke up, and my pajamas were torn. And that is where I got hurt in my dream. Mrs. Nelson held Robin's hand as she walked her to the bus stop. So you had a dream, and the dream hurt you when you were awake. They can't do that, honey. They are not real. Robin did not seem amused by this answer. No. No, it is real. And it really did hurt me. And I'm really scared to go to sleep. Mrs. Nelson stopped, dead in her tracks. She turned to Robin and looked down. 
okay, okay. You don't live too far away, so I'll take you. So I'll tell you what. I'll check with someone, and I will give you a ride home. I need to talk to your father about this. He's obviously letting you watch those scary movies again. Oh, no, no. Daddy isn't home yet. And he, and he didn't let me watch scary movies last night. We watched some movies with a guy fighting someone with lightning shooting out of his hands. I promise. She pleaded because she did not want her father to get in trouble. Okay, well, if this is still a problem on Monday, you tell me first thing, okay? I want you to be okay. It's my job to protect you kids. Mrs. Nelson said this as she escorted Robin to her bus. Robin boarded the bus and sat down at her usual seat in the back of the window. She pulled the window down and said goodbye to her teacher. Mrs. Nelson gave a faint wave and turned towards the school. The bus finally loaded and began its journey to drop off the children. Robin was the, was the last stop, and it took hours to get there. Good grief, hours? First of all, I really like Mrs. Nelson. I feel like she's a very logical teacher. I appreciate her. Yeah, because I think like she's thinking there's something else going on, possibly. Right, obviously, like some kind of ab- abuse or something else going on in the home. And, and a child, when a child likes, a child is very like, and this is, I work with kids. They they don't hide emotion while they're very raw, mm-hmm. and so they when their mood changes, their emotions change. And when a kid is scared, there's a flip there as a switch. Like you feel it. M- adults hide fear very well. Kids don't. And, and as a parent or as a or as a person that works with kids, when a kid's scared, you feel it in the room because it's a change in the atmosphere. And so the fact that the way she's describing the story, and this is why kids in spooky movies scare the shit out of me, is because they can feel this stuff. Yeah. And it's like when they say like something grabbed me, they don't. They're not young kids don't bullshit like that they're like no. something tried to grab me and par- adults feel that right like, and it's terrifying as yeah. an adult to hear a kid say something tried to grab me and you're thinking okay you're trying to rationalize it basically yes. in your brain and think okay what could po- who could have possibly tried to grab this kid and, and what can i do about it by the time robin arrived home her father was pulling up to the house he drove is pulling up to the house there was a period there sorry guys he drives a white pinto with wood paneling on the side oh, good and did construction work he always had lumber and tools in the back of his trunk he got out of the car and waved to robin as she walked up to the sidewalk while he unloaded his vehicle she started to run towards her father and leap to give him a giant hug welcome home bug what's the plan for tonight well, we have the weekend off. Are we going to be party animals, he asked. The idea of this weekend has been to, in talks for weeks. Her father typically worked weekends, so the fact that the two of them had the same days off be, was extremely exciting. Mm. They went into the house to get cleaned up because tonight they were going to the fun zone. Robin was going to have a blast playing on all the optical courses after showing, after showering and changing clothes, the two were ready to hit the town. They ate pizza, played video games, and Robin even got to ride on a zip line. This was the most fun she had in a while, and she didn't even think about the nightmares that she had anymore. Later that evening, they returned home roughly around 9 p.m., way past Robin's bedtime. <laughs> And they decided to watch a boring TV show until Robin began to nod off to sleep. Her father carried her up to bed and tucked her in. He said goodnight to the stuffed animal gang and turned off the lights, closing the door only slightly. He left the hallway light on and retreated back downstairs to watch TV. The wind was howling a bit outside. There must be another storm coming, Robin thought herself but she slowly drifted off to sleep there was a noise in the house that woke her from her sleep the hallway light was on and the door completely open Hmm. she was positive her 
dad closed it when she left. She got out of bed and grabbed the door. That was when she smelled it. Again. The odor. The distinguishing odor of something that was alive. She couldn't describe it like pneumonia. And then she heard it. The growling. The crazy noise she heard last night. Her ears began to ring as it did the previous night. She turned to make her way to the bed. And as she turned, her vision began to blur and white out. When there, at the foot of her bed, she saw movement. She couldn't make out much, but there was movement. All Robin wanted to do was to climb under her covers and make it all go away. She made a dash for the bed. She didn't know why, but it felt like the safe place to be. But as she darted to the bed, the creature leaped and landed on the bed, sliding it a foot away from the wall. <laughs> The growling and the snarling grew louder, and the ringing in her ears did not stop. Thinking quickly, she turned and ran down the hallway. She made it to the top of the stairs, but then the creature appeared in front of her, blocking her way down the stairs. At this moment, Robin finally got a good glimpse of the creature. It had a massive, it had a massive dog-like frame, the size of a tiger. Its skin was brown and leathery. Its eyes glue red. Its snarling mouth agape displayed canines that glistened in the full moonlight on a bright like on a bright autumn's eve, and the smell was repugnant. She wanted to grasp her nose, but she was too frozen in fear. All of a sudden the creature lunged at her. Without thinking, Robin leapt over the balcony from the top of the stairs. Just as she was about to hit the bottom, Robin shot up from her bed. She was sweating, crying, and breathing hard, unable to comprehend what had happened. Her father came running in after all the commotion and flipped on the lights. What's wrong? What's wrong? The monster, Daddy. The monster again. He looked around the room. The bed was in disarray. The bed itself had been pushed away from the wall almost a foot. For real and her stuffed animal nets were ripped off from the wall. You know I have to fix all these walls now, right? Slightly angry, slightly laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daddy, but I didn't do it. It was the monster doggy. He sat down on the bed. M monster doggy? Robins sat up, wiping the drool from her nose and the tears from her eyes. Yeah, the monster doggy. He was super scary. I was so scared. I jumped down the stairs from the top of the balcony. Well, um, I'm pretty sure I would have seen you once you hit the ground. It was just a bad dream, sweetheart. Just calm down. Daddy's here. With that, he touched her, wrapped his hands around her, and kissed her good night once more. He turned off the lights and closed the door slightly behind him, leaving the hallway lights on as he made his way downstairs. Robin tried to drift back off to sleep, trying to ignore what happened. For the next few days, for the next day, Robin was, f was forcing herself to stay awake, refusing to fall asleep again. Then, one evening, while seated in her writing chair, trying to color to keep her mind awake. Robin began to nod off, and she laid her head down on the desk, arms folded underneath, and before she knew it, she fell fast asleep. She woke up soon after. She wasn't sure what time it was, but it was already dark outside. The moon was out and full, shining brightly through the alleyway window. Her clock in the corner that makes that crazy beeping noise was blinking midnight over and over again. I must have been asleep for several hours, she said. I must have been asleep for several hours, she said. Go, to, go see her daddy. She went to see her dad to see what he was watching. 
Maybe he's still awake. Maybe I could ask him what time it is. The room was dark, and she headed towards the bedroom door. However, there was a glow of light from underneath the door. When she reached the doorknob, she smelled something. Something pungent. He's back. Then, he, then she heard that familiar sound. Snarling. The sound was emanating from the closet. Shaking. She started to wet herself. She slowly turned her head to glance over, and she saw the sliding door slowly creeping open as the growling grew louder and the pungent smell grew stronger. What does he want? <laughs> she knew jumping into bed was a bad idea. The only way to get through this was to get downstairs. So she ripped open the door as the demon dog burst through the closet door, crashing into the wire desk on the way out. As Robin ran, she glanced back to see the creature clear as day. Its leathery skin glistened with what was either slime or sweat. Its teeth protruding from its jaws. Its eyes glowing red with a faint yellow spot where the pupil area should be. It had pointy ears and two tiny horns on its head. Horns? Robin dashed for the top of the stairs across the hallway. She made it to the top of the stairs and looked back one last time. The creature was already somehow in front of her, ready to strike. She took two steps down the stairs, and the dog lunged at her, crashing to the wall behind her. Robin thought the only thing she could do, the only thing she could think of to save herself was to leap. She jumped over the balcony. As she fell through the air, she thought this might be a dream like the last time. Crash, until she slammed onto the ground. Sobbing, crawling, she scrambled to her feet. She looked around the living room. It was, it was hazy, purple, and everything seemed surreal. She had to catch her breath for a second and closed her eyes, but only for a moment. She didn't hear the growling behind her, but but she, she had to get to safety. The pain coursing through her body from her legs when she made impact. She didn't know what to do. Her judgment was cloudy. Maybe to the neighbor's house? She opened the first door and ran outside, crashing through the gate to the sidewalk. Robin looked up and down the street, terrified. Everything seemed normal outside. There was nothing wrong. Everything was okay. Am I safe? What happened? She saw her dad a few houses down, talking to one of the neighbors. She ran to them, completely shaking, bleeding. They could see the fear in her eyes and asked what was wrong. Robin recounted everything that happened. Her father took Robin in her arms and held her tight and told the neighbors he would be back in a few after he checked on things. They walked together into the threshold of the house. Robin hesitated and was terrified to go back in. Her dad picked her up and helped carry her inside, wondering if the dog, this creature, would be waiting for her on the other side of the door. She stepped inside. There was nothing wrong. Nothing appeared out of place. Her dad went to the stairs and saw a giant crack on the floor where Robin's little body had hit the ground. Her father was furious and scared. What happened? You could have hurt, you could have killed yourself. What were you thinking? I'm sorry, Daddy. It was the doggy. His eyes dilated. A mixture of fear and anger swelled up into him. Okay, listen. We're going to deal with this tomorrow. I want you to go to bed, and we can deal with this tomorrow. Maybe deal with it right now, because you kept saying that. Come on, Dad. Step it up. After attending to her wounds and comforting her... Sorry, this, this gets intense. 
After tending to her wounds and comforting her downstairs, her daddy carried her up to back to bed. The room was a little darker for some reason this night. The wind was still... The wind was still... was still there, but there was no rain. The moonlight seemed to have vanished. Around 2 a.m., she woke up feeling that something was off. Looking around her room, she noticed her closet door was wide open. She heard growling, but did not see the dog. Before she could react, the bed began to drift towards the closet. She screamed as loud as she could. This was the most terrifying nightmare she had ever had. She was paralyzed with fear as the bed slowly floated towards the closet door. She could see the glimpse of those red eyes with those yellow pupils growing as she got ever closer. The closet door slammed behind her and everything went dark. The next morning, Robin's father was talking to the sheriff. Listen, I I don't know where she is. Please find my daughter. I don't know where she could have gone. He sat on the couch quietly as they searched the entire house. She's not in the house. Don't you think I would have seen her myself if she was in the house? That moment, the police got a call from Rob's, from Robbie's teacher, who was worried that Robin was being abused. She came to school with several bruises and cuts and talked about being attacked in her dreams. She, the, the situation was too much for the father to comprehend. At that moment, an officer from upstairs yelled for the sheriff to come up to take a look at Robin's room. A few moments later, the sheriff came down, slamming Robin's father into the wall, putting his hands behind his back, stating, you're under arrest for potential kidnapping and murder. Hmm. We checked her room. In the closet, there was a ton of clothes and toys covered in blood with violent scratch marks on the inside of the closet door and a weird lingering smell. This was the story of the beast. That's it? That's how it ends. That's how it ends? So the father's arrested for abuse. Robin died in the closet (laughs) from the from the demon dog. Oh my god! I tell you that story. Oh, I researched that and I knew it was coming. And still, it it just—I don't know why that that we've already done a couple of stories. The demon dog ate her, but she escaped it multiple times. Yeah, it's just it's. And I think it's like, it's, it, I like how they play with the fact, like, was it abuse? Did she run away from home? They hinted at this stuff. Yeah. The thing that, that scared me the most about this story was the smell. I don't know why that irritated me. Yeah. It's a weird thing that I picked my brain. I was like, you know what? The eyes. Okay. I just assu- uh, assumed it was like the sulfur smell, like, like rotten eggs. I think it was wet know? dog. Yeah. Definitely. It I think was, that's what they're going for. It was closer to like a dog smell, like a, I don't know, like a stinky odor versus sulfur because sulfur would be closer to like a ghost, you know, mm-hmm. or a demon or something like that. Like that's what you smell when there's a demon or a ghost around, but stinky dog, like that makes a lot more sense with the whole doggy concept behind well, it. When she was saying it and she couldn't comprehend the smell mm-hmm. and the fact that like if you're, f- if you're a kid... Like, I'm sorry. Like, Here we go. This guy sounds like a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not superstitious. I was raised Catholic. Spoiler warnings. I believe there's a higher power. <laughs> if if I if I put a kid to bed and the bed is completely moved and there are scratch marks in the fucking clothes, what the? You know what happened in Poltergeist at the end? Spoiler: They just left the fucking house and got a hotel room. If your kid throws themselves off a fucking balcony because there's a dog, there's something don't there. Don't go back it's, to the freaking house. It's not fake. No, it's not fake. And, and just the facts, like, and that was the part of the story that blew my mind out of all of it was 
walk into the house, everything seems normal, except the tile's fucking broken where your child leaped. Right. And off she the tells stairs. You, she's like, hey, by the way, I jumped off the balcony to avoid dying and risking my own life. But, you know, put me to bed. It's fine. And the fact that like, the dad's like, all right, well, we're going to clean all these wounds up. We'll do this tomorrow. Like, partially it's a dad move, but still it's like, what the fuck? But also, she, like, also we're, we'll deal with this tomorrow. How many times did he say that during the story? Like, at least twice. Mm-hmm. He said, we'll deal with we'll this deal tomorrow. We'll deal with it tomorrow. Well, he didn't deal with it, clearly. And now she's dead. Good job. Yeah, it's just like, oh, my God. That story really, for mm. some reason, got to me. That was that was good. That's that terrifying. Really good. Yeah, and in fact, like, they built her up so well in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's a longer story. It's, it's longer than we usually do. But the fact is, I like that because I really was invested in her at the beginning. Because, like, okay, she's into this stuff, whatever. And, and I didn't think this would get as dark. Because yeah. blood was mentioned once, and it was only after when you feel like, oh, fuck did she just get eaten she's dead she's dead i honestly so like to kind of take it back a little bit i appreciated the description of the dog demon like with the horns and the leathery skin and Mm -hmm. the scent and the eyes like i feel as though that really helped encapsulate the moment and and be very descriptive and the scratching on the door and yeah. the cops came in and was like, yeah, you're under arrest. Why? Well, there's, it looks like a kid was kept in here and was scratched. Yeah. It was scratching. And she's like, oh, my God. Like, how the fuck would you let your kid live in there anymore? Uh, it's, anyway. a, it's another story where it's just like, you know, why did you put, why did she sleep in her bedroom for the last couple of nights? Why did she do that? Yeah. Well, do you have the kid? Let her sleep somewhere else. I, I guess if I had, again, like. It's weird how all these stories have to deal with kids. But mm-hmm. if this was my kid, we're leaving the house. We're getting an exorcist. We're doing something else. Like, <laughs> I, but for real, if your kid is normal, randomly, let's just say it's randomly normal. I, I think generally I could be wrong. I could completely be wrong. Do not kill me on the internet. <laughs> kids that are normal don't just, there's usually signs if they do crazy things. There's, there's process. There's a thing there. And kids usually don't just l- randomly leap off a building. No. Maybe they do. No, not really. No, not unless there's a reason behind it. Yeah, and like and like when when people commit God forbid suicide, there are signs that people usually miss. It's never it's usually not random. It's people miss signs. If this happened to my kid, therapy, let's go. We're going. We're gonna get out of this house. Right. We're, we're gonna get out of this environment. Right. Like like ASAP. Like within 24 hours, therapy. Not like. Oh, next week we'll think about it. Yeah. We're going to go back to that bedroom that you tried to kill yourself in. (laughs) No. You know that bedroom that you tried to leap to your death because you were so terrified? Get back in there, kid. You'll be fine. Right. You're fine. We'll deal with it tomorrow. Yeah. No. No. It's like, okay, you're going to sleep here. We'll turn the lights on. Then we're going to get a hotel room. I'm calling a therapist. We're going to talk about this shit. Right. And we're going to figure out a way or medication or something, but not like... If you go to that extreme, and I like... That's the other thing I like about this is like how they built it each time it happens... It there, it escalates. It mm-hmm. escalates. Mm-hmm. The first time, okay, it's whatever. The second time is the one where it's like she had that fight or flight. The first time she thought she jumped off the balcony and she woke up in her bed. The second time she did. She pushed it. And each time the dad's like, no, it's no big deal. No, it's no big deal. Oh, shit. It wasn't bullshit. Right. And he noticed the door each time. He right. noticed the closet door. Right. But he didn't make a big deal about it. No. And it's tragic because it seems like it wasn't the dad's fault. Right. So, uh, wow. So, that was the beast. Um, guys, I want to say thank you for so much for episode three. Um, link to link to this thing on Apple Podcasts will be in the description, including our email, which is spirits and ghost stories at gmail.com. Please send all your thoughts in. If you hate us, let us know. If you think I'm ugly, definitely let me know if uh, you like it let us know Come if you on. like us like it let's, yeah let's be positive Tom. if you have some ideas on stories that you want us to tell please Send let us them. know um this has been fun good night yep. carly good night. good night guys thanks